What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to the very first episode of the CPA Zone, the podcast where we discuss tax strategies and accounting tips for small business owners and real estate investors. This podcast is designed to help entrepreneurs like you succeed by teaching you how to pay as little in tax as legally possible and keep your accounting records in shape so you can use the numbers to tell a story about what's going on in your business. Our goal is to help you keep as much money as possible in your business working for you without violating the law. My name is Ryan Pulis. I'm the managing member of the Pulis Group. We're a tax and accounting firm offering tax planning and advisory services to small business owners and real estate investors. Whether it's bookkeeping, tax planning, or CFO services that you're looking for, we've got you covered. I decided to start this podcast as a way to share information I've learned over the years with others. While it's not possible to work with every potential client one-on-one, I'm hoping to use this podcast to bridge the gap and provide as much value to as many people as possible. The SBA estimates 44% of U.S. GDP comes from small businesses, yet most colleges and business schools train students how to work for or serve large businesses and pay very little attention, if any, to small business. For example, accounting students are trained how to work for the big four accounting firms, and those in turn work mostly for large businesses. Small businesses tend to be a minor part of any accounting program or business school. So our goal here is to help small business owners, and real estate investors. You can find a lot of advice online for business owners, but half the time it's garbage, and the same applies to real estate investors. For example, you may hear about a tax strategy that works and is technically possible. However, the information provided is lacking or halfway there at best, and you can get yourself in serious trouble by using a strategy if you don't know exactly how to do it and how to do it properly. So our goal is to make sure you have all the facts and can implement the tax strategies that you hear about and do them right. So for example, let's talk about one today, a popular tax strategy, some low hanging fruit, paying your kids through your business. Can you do it? Of course you can, but you don't just write your kids a check and take a deduction. You should have a job description in place, a rate of pay based on the work performed and a record of the dates and hours worked. As with most things tax related, documentation is key. So let's talk about how you pay your kids and how this tax strategy can benefit you. How this strategy works depends on your entity structure. So if you're set up as a sole proprietor, a single member LLC, or a husband-wife partnership, that's going to give you the most bang for your buck when it comes to paying your kids. So and when with one of those entity structures, you're not required to withhold payroll taxes when your kids are under 18. That's Social Security and Medicare tax. That also applies to the federal unemployment tax, FUDA. In these situations, a single member LLC, sole prop, husband, wife, partnership, you simply pay your kids. There's no withholding requirement for the payroll taxes when they're under 18, and there's no withholding requirement for income taxes as long as their income's under the standard deduction limit, which for 2023, that amount is $13,850. So your kids won't even have to file a tax return. You won't have to worry about withholding and paying payroll taxes or income taxes. Now, if you're structured as a C-corp or S-corporation, that changes a bit. You are responsible for withholding and paying the payroll taxes. If your kids are under that standard deduction threshold, the $13,850, no need to worry about withholding and paying income taxes, assuming they don't have other sources of income that put them over the limit. Now, at what age can you start paying your kids? The IRS court cases have allowed kids as young as seven to be hired in their parents' businesses. Some people may make the argument that you can hire very young children to act as models uh, for business marketing or some other purposes. You're taking pictures of kids and maybe that works, but how much are you really going to be able to pay a baby or toddler for a few pictures for marketing? You want to be careful. There's the old saying, pigs get fat, but hogs get slaughtered. So don't get too overzealous with any of these tax strategies and make sure you're following all the rules. We like to see kids around the age of seven or older, and the older they are, the more t- work they can do, the more types of work they can do. You can get them into the office, shred papers, do scanning, and really get some value out of the work they're doing and properly pay them and take those deductions. What you're doing when you pay your kid is you're shifting income out of your tax bracket into theirs. So if you're in the top tax bracket at 37% and you're paying your minor child to do some work, you're generally going to be paying them in a tax bracket that's taxed at 0% within that standard deduction. So 
That's taking income that would otherwise be taxed at 37% and treating it as taxable at 0%. And then you can also set your kids up with a Roth IRA. They have earned income now. They can fund a Roth, let that money grow tax-free and help set them up for the future. So paying your kids is a really great strategy. You just want to make sure you're doing it right and understand the difference that in paying your kids and the tax deduction that's involved that's dependent on the entity structure. Again, S Corp, C Corp, you're going to have to withhold and pay payroll taxes with a sole proprietor, single member LLC, which is treated just, just like a sole proprietor for tax purposes, or a husband-wife partnership. You don't have to worry about those payroll taxes as long as they're under 18. So that covers the basics of the tax strategy of paying your kids. In future episodes, we'll cover other various tax strategies. We'll discuss the pros and cons of different entity structures, talk about how to read financial statements, track KPIs, and so on. Each week, we're going to cover a topic that helps you grow your business while still trying to pay as little in tax as legally possible. Thank you for listening, and I hope you got some benefit out of this. Hit the like and subscribe button. And we're always taking on new clients. So if you'd like to work with us, check us out at our website at thepulisgroup.com forward slash contact. That's T-H-E-P-U-L-I-C-E-G-R-O-U-P dot com forward slash contact. Thank you.